Hi again, Greg Bell, the News Tribune here in the broadcast booth of Lumen Field because it's pouring down rain at about 38 degrees in Seattle tonight. After the Seahawks explode for a 51-29 win over the Detroit Lions, well, where's this been all year, right? That's the question you might have had during the game. Well, they haven't played the Detroit Lions all year. That was one thing. Secondly, this offense played the way it was designed to play. Really, had they haven't played since the opener in Indianapolis that they also won because they ran the ball first and foremost. They played 71 offensive plays because they converted 7 of 12 on third down. That meant you saw most of Shane Waldron's playbook. You saw Gerald Everett, the tight end, getting involved. You saw Rashad Penny run for 170 yards, career high, 25 carries, two touchdowns. DK Metcalf, three touchdowns of the four that Russell Wilson threw. Wilson, 20 of 29, 236 yards, looking the most efficient and really best he's looked coming back since October's finger surgery on his throwing hand. But again, it was the Lions and it wasn't the Rams when they needed to do anything close to this to keep their season alive a couple weeks ago in Inglewood. To me, the most telling things about this game, first of all, during the game, DK Metcalf, he was stomping off the field that Rams game with the missed opportunities and Russell Wilson not getting him the ball in key situations. Of course, the touchdown that could have tied the game at 17 with seven and a half minutes left when he beat Javon Ramsey and Wilson under throwing by about five yards. Well, they didn't have the running game then that they had today. With the running game, Wilson had time to throw. He had play action passes and bootlegs and the offensive line gave him time to look at multiple receivers. Voila, four touchdown passes, three to Metcalf. Metcalf's demeanor completely changed, obviously. Smiling with fans after the game, triumphantly running off the field, pumping his fist. Metcalf admitted after the game that yes, he's been frustrated this year. He said it peaked during week seven, eight, and nine. That was the end of October, beginning of November. The last games that Geno Smith played for Russell Wilson. And then when Wilson came back and they got shut out 17 nothing in Green Bay, the first shutout of Wilson's career. He said, I grew up a lot. Metcalf, 24 years old, said, I grew up a lot this year. It's easy, of course, to say that after catching three touchdown passes. But for sure, there's some lessons learned from DK Metcalf, even as he set his new career high with now 11 touchdown catches this season. To me, what is the most telling thing about this whole day was what I saw before the game. On the field, Russell Wilson and his wife, Sierra, presenting a ceremonial check of $2.7 million, one of those big oversized checks you see, written out the Seattle Children's Hospital and their Immuno Heroes program that fights cancer, childhood cancer worldwide. That to me tells me more than all this you're gonna hear for the next months about will the Seahawks trade Wilson Wilson, is Wilson leaving Seattle. The roots that Wilson has left, has made here in Seattle, what he and his wife have done, Why Not You Foundation, the Visiting Children's Hospital every Tuesday for a decade until COVID restrictions set him off from doing that. The things he's seen, the lives he's transformed here in Seattle. There is a lot to say for that. And that is, goes a long way to where not only he wants to be, but where he's gonna end up here. Again, two more years on his contract beyond this one. The Seahawks do not wanna trade him, which is why they have the ultimate no trade lever in this whole situation. You're going to hear all offseason about how the Saints want him and Sean Payton's mind and this team and that team. Who knows who will float whatever reason. Rumors that, I mean, heck, you saw what you saw last year after a 12-4 and Seahawks season in a division title. Here's one that their first losing season since 2011. Only the second time Wilson will have made the playoffs in 10 years first losing season since before he became a Seahawks, what possibly could he say in his camp put out this offseason that would top last year's when they were winning. But the roots that Wilson has put down in Seattle go a lot further than football. And they are extraordinary and they are special. Talk to the people who are at Children's Hospital. My wife works there. He transforms lives there. It, it's not an accident. He's done that for 10 years in a concerted effort, both time and money. And that goes a long way to where he wants to settle his legacy in the NFL, both on and off the field. What else? We saw Bobby Wagner, of course, get hurt the very first play of the game. It's a sprained knee. Pete Carroll said that Wagner was doing MRI later Sunday night. 
and the Seahawks would probably know into, more into Monday morning. Notably, after the game, both the man who replaced him at middle linebacker Cody Barton and uh, offensive tackle Dwayne Brown said they were praying for Wagner. I can't see Wagner playing if there's any injury of any severity. Him playing Sunday in the season finale that is meaningless to Seattle at Arizona could be meaningless for the Cardinals in their playoff stake. They're already clinched. Penny's rushing, is, I think, put him in the team's plans for 2022. This was the third game in four weeks. He's had at least 135 yards. He reset his career high that he'd set last month. And it's no sure thing that Chris Carson's coming back, of course, from his season-ending neck surgery. A running back with neck and cervical issues is not a given that he'll return, even though the projection is that he'll get back late in the this coming spring. Rashad Penny's contract ends after this last game Sunday. He has played his way back into the Seahawks plans for 2022. All that coverage and more is at thenewstribune.com and on Twitter at GBellSeattle. As always, thank you for watching and Happy New Year.